Question 8. Ethanol biofuel can be made from cornstarch. Flow diagram shows the steps involved in the production of ethanol biofuel. So we've got cornstarch in water, we've got hydrolysis and fermentation to produce a 13% ethanol solution, distillation to a 96%, and then through a molecular sieve to give you your pure ethanol biofuel. Step 1 produces a solution with a concentration of 13% ethanol. We've already said that. Uh, this can be checked by measuring the density of the solution and comparing it to calculated values. So the density of the solution can be calculated using the following expression. Nothing you've seen before, but they're giving you it all. Mass of 1 centimetre cubed of ethanol is given at 0.79 grams and 1 centimetre cubed of water at 1 gram. Calculate the density of the ethanol in grams per centimetre cubed formed in step 1. Okay. Right, so what we have is 13% ethanol. So if it's 13% ethanol, that must be 87% water. Okay, and that's in 100 centimetres cubed. So therefore, we've got 87 grams of water. Okay, so in the remaining 13 uh, that we have, okay, so it's 13 centimetres cubed, uh, 13 centimetres cubed times the 0 0.79 would give me 10.27 grams of ethanol okay density is m1 plus m2 over year over 100 so 10.27 plus my 87 over 100 will give me 0.97 grams per centimeter cubed that's it okay right it says 96 percent ethanol is produced by distillation suggests why pure ethanol cannot ethanol biofuel sorry cannot be obtained from an ethanol water mixture well i mean you have to not necessarily know the information but i would kind of expect you to have a reasonable reason why this is not going to work you can't separate things really well by distillation if their melting and boiling points are well sorry distillation boiling points are close together and ethanol water really is. Water, you know water evaporates below 100 degrees. It boils at 100, but it evaporates below that. And ethanol is 78, so they're really close together. So it's basically just the similarity in boiling points. That's your problem. Okay, step three uses a molecular sieve. Suggest how this molecular sieve could remove water. Right, so we've got a 0.3 nanometer hole in the sieve. So what we need is for the water to get through it, but the ethanol not to get through it. That's it. So then you just have to explain why that would work. Well, here's water and here's ethanol. Ethanol is much larger than water, so therefore the water will get through and the ethanol won't. Pretty much it. Ethanol can also be prepared by nucleophilic substitution using your knowledge of chemistry. Don't we all hate these ones? Discuss the, the role of nucleophilic substitution reactions in the preparation of other chemicals. Right, so I went out and pulled the bit that you're going to have to talk about. You're going to have to talk about monohaloalkanes. So this is from the content statements. Um, so the first bit of it is not the most important thing. It's just telling you other things they do. But from here on, basically take part in nucleophilic substitution reactions with. And it says, discuss the role of nucleophilic substitution reactions in the preparation of other chemicals. So our preparation is, we can prepare with alkalis to form alcohols, we can form ethers, you can form uh, nitriles, and that could be hydrolyzed carboxylic acid. So you have, you have four groups in here, okay? I don't know that you would really need to go into a lot of detail about SN1 and SN2 because that's really about the mechanism and it's not actually about the preparation of other chemicals. But this is definitely the section up here is really where you need to concentrate your information. So make sure you're happy with all of those because that's what you would need to do to bring it all to bear. Okay.